Hello and welcome to MHA Digital Community. My name's Katie and today we're going to be making artwork inspired by Italy. So let's get started. Today's piece is going to be a landscape and it's going to be made using oil pastels. This pack has 24 colours but you don't need 24 colours. As long as you have some yellows, reds, greens, blues and yellows you should be fine. I've got a pencil, a rubber and a ruler and I'm using a piece of plain white paper and I've got a red piece of thin card as the backdrop. So the first step is going to be to draw a frame that we're going to draw inside um, and this one measures 22 centimetres wide and 12 and a half centimetres in height. So I've already pre-measured this and put a couple of dots in the corner so that I can join them up to make my rectangle shape. And go over this line again. So now we're ready to get started on the drawing. So if we look at this landscape, um, it's really only got a few elements in it, so it's really quite simple to do. We've got essentially a line across here that is the horizon. We have a really strong composition line which is this pathway that leads our eye up to the middle here this is two curved lines we have a little rectangle for our house and then we have these long um, trees here which are just really overly shapes that we've drawn and the clouds which are just wafty shapes so there isn't too much drawing involved and the shapes are really quite easy to do because we're working with oil pastels, we're not going to go very detailed, so everything is just really strokes of oil pastel, and you'll see how I do that in a moment. Um, so let's start off then. If you want to do it by eye, you can, but you can see that this line here is about three quarters of the way up. If I was to measure this, just to give you an idea, um, the line across the horizon is probably about five or six centimeters down. So if I wanted to completely emulate what we've got there, copy that, five or six centimetres is, is around there. Um, sometimes some people like to work with a ruler, some people prefer to do things by eye. I quite like to do it by eye but then I've practised quite a bit. So I'm just going to put a really faint line across here just so I know whereabouts that's going to be. And then if you notice this house, um, if I was to just check where the middle of this is, we've got 22 across here, so we've got 11 would be the middle. The bottom little corner of this house is just where the middle would be, that middle line. It's nice to have the house to the right of the middle, um, and in terms of landscape painting and photography actually, it's always nice to have something slightly off centre, which is what this house is. You could put it in the middle if you wanted, but it would alter, it would alter the feel of it. It's nice to get creative and kind of change things around, but I think to start with, if you stick to this composition, you could always go on and move things around to suit you. So I'm just going to then check where the middle of this is, which is around here, and then I know that the house is going to be here. So it's just a little rectangle that I'm drawing. And if you notice, it's slightly on a slope. That's just kind of how I decided to place it, just slightly on a little slope. We've got a little rectangle there, and then we've got this little roof area there. Okay, now that we've done that, I'm going to put in the really big pathway that leads. And I'm just using my pencil lightly just to get this curve drawn. Okay. 
We've got the illusion of perspective here, so things getting smaller as they're further away. So we've drawn that there. When I look at my original one, and I kind of, it's actually much wider. Yeah, so all the way to there. So I'm just going to expand that out a little bit more. It goes all the way to there, like that. And I can rub out the extra line. It's going to be covered with pastel in any case, so that's fine, but you can just rub that out a little bit. Okay, so that's two, two big elements drawn in. Then we're going to put in uh, these areas of hills, rolling hills in the background. Just very lightly just sketch in this like that. This one is higher than that one, as you can see, so we'll just make sure that that's a little bit higher. And then we're going to put in um, the trees. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven trees on this side. So I've got one there. I just draw a little stick and then just roughly the height that I'd like it to be. Um, and I've kind of dotted them around so they go up and down a little bit. So we've got one a little bit higher. Yeah, and they're just literally little long overly shapes, but not completely straight at the sides. You can just wave them around like that. Then I'm going to put another couple of trees here. I've got one, two, three little trees here in front of the house. And um, I've got one a bit further down here. A little one just here at the side. And then two more slightly larger trees here. Okay, so now we've got those basic outlines. Just one more element to add, and that's the clouds, the fluffy clouds. Um, and these are just a series of curvy lines, like that. Okay, so we've got the clouds there. Um, and then we're ready to start to add the color. If you've never used oil pastels before, they're pretty much like uh, using wax crayons, but they're slightly creamier and slightly denser in color. So uh, now we're going to start to work in color. I've got my first oil pastel. I'm just going to press it quite hard to get a dense, bold color. I can also use it more lightly, and then I can see some of the white of the paper. If I use a little piece of paper towel or something like a, a Q-tip or a tissue, I can also blend the colors so that they are smoother in texture if I want that. And I can lay colors, overlay colors like this. So I can use, create different textures and use two colors at the same time. I could use more than two colors if, if I wish as well. Um, so that's the, that's the kind of yellow area. With the greens, I've got a light green. And again, I can overlay a darker green or indeed another color like a blue to mix them. So you can really get quite a, quite a big range of mixtures of color by overlaying them. Um, and you can make them rough like that or a smoother texture by blending them. So there they're completely mixed together in a completely different and softer texture. Um, I'm also going to be using, in the background, I'm going to be using some blue and some purple so we've got some purple here and a little bit of darker blue. And again, if we blend those together and smooth them, they can blend together nicely like that. Um, in landscape painting and art, it's really useful to have these different purples for things that are in the distance. It's just like a traditional technique that looks really good for putting in things like mountains, um, and things that are really far in the distance. Generally, the closer it is to you, the bolder and brighter you want it to be, and the further away it is, the softer you like to, the softer it should look. Um, so now we're going to just get a couple of colors out for the sky. So I've got a pale blue, a palish blue, and a white, and again, 
if I use my tissue, I can blend those together. If you look on this example, there's a variation in colour, so towards the top there it gets a little bit darker, um, and I can just use a darker blue to create that effect when I'm doing the sky. So I'm going to start off then doing this area at the front here. And if you notice, I'm kind of working in a diagonal direction just because that's easier for me. Obviously, if you're left-handed, you'd be working that way, but that's easier for me. And I'm just going to put a layer down here. On here, I've also got a little bit of green that carries on around the top of the yellow, so I'm obviously going to leave a little bit of space for that. But generally, I'm just filling that in. Don't worry if you go over the edges because we can cut this out and, and lay it on the red, so it doesn't matter if you go over the edges, that's fine. It's just spare areas. Okay, so that's that. Then we're going to fill in this area here. So obviously at the moment you can still see quite a lot of white, that is okay. Uh, we're trying to build in a little bit of texture to this. Then I'm going to take the darker yellow. And this time I'm using it, so you can either use it right on its side where you're filling in a bigger area, or you can tilt it slightly and you get a thinner line. When they're new, if I've got a colour here I haven't used much, like the grey, when they're new you can get a really fine line but obviously as they wear down a bit, you have to keep turning it around or use the other end to get a sharper line. But for mine, I'm just going to do these longish strokes across. So you could imagine this being generally some kind of vegetation that's um, quite dry, could be quite, quite long kind of dried grass. Okay, so we've filled that in. Uh, I might go back and put another layer of yellow, just add a little bit more, make it slightly bolder. And there we are, so that's all of this area done. Now I'm going to start to work on the pathway with the greens. I'm going to actually just put maybe a thin layer of yellow, just because I think be quite a nice base so just a thin layer of a little bit of yellow there and then I'm going for my paler green I'm going over those pencil lines I originally drew and then I'm working across that way so I'm going to what I've got here is a couple of bands so I've got green then a lighter yellowy area then another green then like so I've got four bands of color there so I might just draw these, some lines like that. And then rather than working diagonally for this bit, I'm actually just trying to deliberately work horizontally just to kind of flatten that, make it slightly different to the other area. Then I'm going to take the dark green And have some dark green areas. Then I'm going to take, um, I've got an even darker green, so I'll just have a little bit of that. Um, and then some blue.
and I'm going to take some of this um, darker yellow and just run that across so you'll see how it kind of blends through and I might just include a little bit of dark brown at the bottom here just to darken it And then with the tissue, I'm just going to blend some of it a bit, especially towards this end. Just smooths it off a little bit, lightens it off a bit. Okay. A bit more blue. And I'm going to put in this area of green here. So I've got a pale area of green. A slightly darker one. And then I'm going to put in a broken line, so in between the trees, a darker green and a bit of blue. And then we're ready to do the trees as we're going along with the green. So with the trees, I'm aiming to try to get a little bit of a three-dimensional effect, which means that I need some areas to be lighter and some areas to be darker. Um, and in this case, we have to just imagine that the sunshine is over here uh, on this side. So the things that are the trees, each tree will have a lighter area just on the left side as I go along. So here, 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 here. So bearing that in mind, I'm going to start off with my dark green and just Draw a little bit of a wiggly line there. It's going to be the darker area. Then I know that my system is going to be dark, medium and light for each one of the trees. I'll try and make them all a little bit different. So I'm going to add some bits of green here. And at the moment I'm just laying it on quite thickly and I can always be blending it once I've just put the colour down. And if you notice, I'm, rather than doing one at a time, I'm doing all of them at once. You don't have to do that, but um, it just helps me to stay organised with my colours. Right, then I'm going to use the paler green. Um, I think I've got even paler green there. So I'm going to just start adding some paler green bits. So I'm going from a darker green to a lighter green and leaving a light edge there. And then I'm going to put in some yellow that I'm going to be able to blend in. That gives us a nice lighter area. Just going to have a go at blending that. So that starts to blend the colours and it also softens, softens the lines a little bit. I can always go back and uh, add more. Okay, so as you will see, there's still a darker area that I'm now going to add. Now I've got the trees down with this dark purpley blue colour. And that just gives the outline of the tree a little bit more of a definition. And then I'm going to get some purple. So purple is good against yellow, it sort of stands out quite well. So we're using some purple here at the basis. And then I'm just adding a little bit of purple here on that darker side. 
And we can go back in and do a bit more blending. Okay, so for now, I'm going to leave those as they are and then I'm going to put in the mountains where we've got, I've got a layer of purple. Um, and I'm going to also use a little bit, I've got like a pinky, sorry, a pinkly purple here. Just put a little bit of that in just to get some variation. And then I'm going in with some blue. So we've got layers of blue and layers of purple. So now that I've added the blue and purple layer for the mountains, I'm going to go over that with some white and then that's going to make them paler, make the colours paler, but also it will blend them a little bit so that they're softer. And you almost don't really want a hard edge to the mountains, you just want them to kind of almost diffuse into the sky. And then I'm going to add some pale blue for the sky. I've left the white areas for the clouds. I'm going to go in with my white pastel now and just, I'm using circular lines on the clouds just to give it a little bit of texture. Then I'm going to add a little bit of darker blue at the top of the sky. And then I'm going to go into the sky with the white. So it's adding a lighter layer, but it's also helping to blend it a little bit. And I'll get my piece of tissue. Or if you have a Q-tip, you could use something like a Q-tip. So you can see how much that blends it together, but also reduces the texture. So it's just a smoother, softer look. Um, and I've got a little bit of purple where I've just very lightly just picked out slight edges to the clouds just to give them just a tiny bit of definition. Right, now I'm ready to work on the house. Um, with my pens I'm just going to go back and just draw a couple of little rectangles for windows. I've chosen to do the house in an orange and purple combination. Um, so we've got a bright orange here, that just stands out quite nicely. And then the roof, I'm using a brown colour, a sort of medium brown. Just 
And this would be the sort of colour you'd get on a terracotta tiled roof. Um, and I've gone into that with my tissue paper just to smooth it down a little bit. And then I'm using a dark brown, just add a little bit of texture, just some little lines like that. A few lines to cross over and just a quite a strong darker line, horizontal line across here just to define the roof a little bit. Um, you'll see that there are little bits of smudges but we can just dust those off like that. Um, we could go back in just here, there's a few areas where I've just kind of not put enough colour so I'm just going to go back, put a little bit of green there. And I'm just going to blend those a little bit more. You might want to blend some of the, the areas at the top here just to make it different from the bottom area. And I'm going to go back in with just a dark pastel there and just bringing a little bit more shadow, a few little shadowy bits here near the house, like that. And then finally I'm just going to add little small marks diagonally away from where the little tree stumps are just to have the semblance of a shadow. like so and then what I do is I cut this out and I lay it on my red paper and that's my Italian landscape. Thank you so much for joining me and I look forward to seeing you in the next one.